During the David Dobrik video that I released a few weeks ago, I stated that I wanted to cover all of the fallen members of the vlog squad. Members who phased out really don't apply here, but members who are pretty controversial do. In 2021, David would find himself in a slew of controversy after multiple women came out against one of the members of the vlog squad. Now this member wasn't someone who was introduced later on, he was one of the people that were in the videos from the very beginning. Dom aka Dirty Dom, not to be confused with Dominic Mysterio the wrestler, was one of the so-called founding members of the vlog squad. Well, that's what I'm going to call him because he technically was there from the very first video. Even in David's earliest videos, you can see the appearance of Dom, either holding the camera and recording David or being in front of the camera as a personality. Dom being so close to David allowed him to get away with a lot of stuff, but everything hit the fan when women started to come out about Dom's essay against them and how David recorded the interaction between Dom and the girl before anything ever happened. That video was posted to David's channel of over 10 million subscribers, but ended up being deleted after the victim asked David to take the video down. Dom let his persona get to his head, while also being cheered on by David for being over the top and crazy for the videos. David enabled the behavior and allowed it to happen in his presence and in his home. The situation would only get worse and Dom was kicked out of the group. But before I get way too far ahead of myself, let's take a step back and start from the very beginning and see See where Dom started to become this sex-filled pervert who'd play up the persona for the videos, but I guess it was behind the cameras as well. So let's take today to look at Dirty Dom, the allegations that destroyed the vlog squad, and what he's doing as of today. Now, when we look at the persona change of Dirty Dom, we have to look all the way back at the oldest videos on both Dom's channel and also David's channel. When we look back at the oldest video on Dom's channel, we can see right from the beginning his party animal persona. Smoking weed, driving around in cars filled with girls, and really feeding into that party side of his character. But his persona didn't start on this channel, it was only amplified. This persona was adopted through the David Dobrik vlogs. At first, Dom was just a regular person on David's channel, but once the vlogs became a thing and took over David's life, Dom needed to find an entertaining character who would make recurring roles throughout the videos. One of the earliest videos of Dom playing up this character to more of a drug dealing bad kid who was addicted to sex was in 2015, and it was actually the 22nd vlog posted to David's channel. In this vlog, Dom could be seen shouting slut off of his hotel balcony while also speaking about AIDS and chlamydia. Then David asked if Dom got his money by selling drugs. This was just the start of his new adopted persona. Fairly tame in the beginning, but as uploads progressed, and with more and more people tuning in to the vlogs each and every week, Dom had to continue to amplify this character. Once Dom adopted this persona, it not only benefited himself, but also David and his channel. Because of this, David started to allow more of the edgy, predatory style comments from Dom. He'd feed into it and made it seem like it was okay for Dom to be a raging sex addict who made women feel uncomfortable. There were a lot of comments during Dom's time in the vlog squad where members were saying that Dom would be on the sex offender list in 10 years, or they would just make it seem like they already knew that Dom was this really big creep. These comments all seemed to be jokes at the time, and anyone watching the vlogs could see that it was a character. But much like Heath Ledger, who played Joe Joker and Batman and engulfed himself in that character, Dom did the same thing, turning himself into a real life creep who made women feel uncomfortable every time he went around them. But again, David laughed off these incidents in return for massive amounts of views from each and every vlog he posted. But enabling this behavior from Dom only made him feel more confident in portraying a creep. He'd start to continue this creepy persona even without the cameras rolling. In 2017, multiple women started to come out against Dom anonymously, with only this tweet by Elijah Daniel saying, Okay, the amount of YouTubers texting and DMing me their creepy Dom stories, LMAFO, for sure just a one-time occurrence though. LMAO, Dom came up to me at the Studio 71 party because I had a low-cut dress on and kept talking about my boobs and that I needed to show them to get through. When I started walking away, he said he'd find me later and I was literally on high alert all night because he made me so uncomfortable. During this time, a YouTuber named Allie Hardesty would upload a video on her own experience with Dirty Dom. During the video, Allie spoke about an event that she went to that had other big content creators, one of which was Dom. Allie spoke about how he made her feel during the event, how at first he was being very flirtatious, but also weird and persistent, how he asked her to kiss him in front of everyone, and how she said no. Later on, he'd bring her to a separate room where it was quieter, and he'd pin her down and try to make out with her, even after she repeatedly said no. But he's being really, really pushy, not taking no for an answer, so then I just tell him, sorry, I don't do PDA. I just don't do personal display of affection. There's a bunch of people. I'm not just going to make out with you in the middle of the dance floor. Like, 
no, sorry. He kept trying. At this point, he tries to physically kind of grab me and pull me in to kiss him. So I walked away back over to my friends and I gave them a look like, no, he's creepy. And they're like, do you know who that is? And I was like, no. Kind of like more downstairs-ish where there was less people. He tries to go in this room that's locked. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, where are you taking me? I don't understand. He eventually takes us to this balcony where there's a bunch of other people. And I sit down because I'm just sick of walking. My feet hurt. I sit down on the couch. It's like this couch that's like on the balcony around the edge. And he gets on top of me, like straddles me, pins me down to the couch. And I think it's like a joke for a second. Like he's going to let go or something or he's gonna try to give me a lap dance or something stupid because there was still music playing out there but he literally doesn't move he has me pinned down on the couch like I'm just sitting normally and he's facing me with his knees on my knees like holding me down and pinning down my arms and he gets really close to my face and is like kiss me and I'm like no I don't do PDA there's a bunch of people out there like get off of me he doesn't move he still thinks it's funny he's laughing I'm super uncomfortable I don't know what to do at this point because it was different out there when I could walk away but now he has me pinned down so I'm trying to like play my cards carefully and I'm still not understanding what kind of sick joke this is and at this point I don't think it's funny anymore I don't think that he has a weird sense of humor I just think that he's a total creep so I turn to my left I make eye contact with this dude this bigger tall dude he easily could have stepped in he gives me a look kind of like are you okay but he almost like found it entertaining that this was happening there was a bunch of people who saw this happening and didn't do anything about it I gave him a look like I don't know this dude I want him to get off of me but I didn't say anything out loud because everyone else who was sitting nearby clearly heard me say it to the guy dirty dom right in front of me and they didn't do anything so he still has me pinned down and he's trying to kiss me I'm like literally moving my head to the side so he doesn't he's trying to make small talk with me flirty like hey if I guess your bra size then will you make out with me and I was like no let me off and he still won't take no for an answer so finally I'm like okay fine like knowing that he's not gonna guess it I'm not wearing a bra I'm wearing like a bodysuit like a velvet blue bodysuit there's a picture of me wearing it on Instagram so I just wasn't wearing anything underneath that that was it and I'm pretty sure that he's just not gonna guess the size I just wanted him to get off me so I was like sure whatever and so he unpins one of my arms and he reaches down my shirt, like caresses my boob. And I'm like, what are you doing? I literally pulled his hand off of me. And he's like, you really expect me to guess without feeling them first? And I was like, dude, just get off of me. And then he guesses the bra size. He gets it wrong. And I say, okay, like get off now. And he's like, no, you still have to kiss me. And I'm like, no, I don't. And he's like, at least give me a half kiss. And I'm like, what's a half kiss? And while I'm saying that, he literally just comes in and starts kissing me, like making out with me, one-sided kiss, one-sided. And after a couple seconds of that, someone comes over and starts talking to him, like making conversation. So he gets up and at that point I stand up and I start walking towards the door and I open the door and I walk straight back to my friends. Like Ellie felt hopeless. There were people all around her, but no one would help her, leaving her to walk out of that room feeling uncomfortable and walking back to her friends who later apologized for telling her to speak to Dom again. This video received almost 1 million views as of today and shined a light on how disturbing Dom can be behind the scenes. But it seemed like Dom never actually acknowledged the video. And because David was such a big YouTuber back then, people pretty much needed a ton of evidence in order to prove that David or his friends can do something completely awful. Ali did come out with another video with evidence and solidified what happened, but again, it was pretty much swept under the rug. Dom continued to upload to his channel as if nothing happened and was continuing to be featured in the Vlog Squad videos. He had engulfed himself in a persona that turned really sick and disturbing and started to hurt people along the way. His appearances in David's vlogs remained consistent, but in 2019, right before the new year, Dom made his last appearance in a David Dobrik video. This was the last time that Dom would be seen on David's channel, and he'd start to post more on his own channel. But in 2021, a bunch of women came out against Dom for all of his inappropriate behavior that he displayed while being connected with David. Dom's biggest catch for these women? Well, it was that he was very close to David and the other members of the vlog squad. On more than one occasion, David filmed these interactions. Once in 2018, when David recorded Dom after he allegedly had a threesome, one of those girls came out against Dom for alleged R word. That girl went to Business Insider to expose Dom. She'd tell the publication that Dom and the vlog squad bought alcohol for the girls, even though they were under 21 years old. Dom constantly pressured them to drink and ended up having sexual relationships with them. The girl told Business Insider that she was way too incapacitated to consent to having sex with him. In April, Dom came out with an Instagram story addressing the essay in which he'd say, it is time for me to address the recent allegations that have come out against me. I want to sincerely apologize directly to the women involved in this incident. I definitely emphasize with the pain that everyone has suffered in this matter. But that being said, 
As far as I'm concerned, everything that occurred during the night in question was completely consensual. I believe the statements that have come out against me are entirely misleading and shed an incorrect light on my involvement. My character is being unfairly attacked and the statements that exist in the public eye are unfairly defaming and assaulting my character and reputation. With that being said, if possible, I want to shed a positive light on the events that have transpired and show the world who I truly am. I recently donated my time as well as thousands of dollars to several women's rights groups to show my support for the unjustified and unnecessary struggles that women endure in our society on a daily basis. It is time for all of us to demonstrate more respect for one another in every facet of life. He then released an 11 minute video a few months later to his channel, which spoke about the allegations that came out a few months before. Here are some of the most important parts of that video. Even just all of this to, uh to be with my parents, to be with my family, and uh, to process all the information. Um, now I'm ready to talk. I was raised by my parents to be a good person and be honest. And I, uh, I don't think I've been honest with you guys. I think um, a lot of times I'm desensitized to this stuff. I think a lot of times I act on impulse and I, uh, I needed to take some time to really go through everything and analyze myself and you know show you show you guys who I really am. I haven't done a good job of separating Dirty Dom, the crazy party animal, you know, guy that hooks up with a bunch of girls and me, Dominicus, the guy that hangs out with my friends, goes to the beach, reads books, hangs off my little brother and mom. Um Dirty Dom was someone I created when I moved out here to LA. I, I, I didn't smoke, I didn't hook up with girls, I didn't, I didn't drink in high school, and I, I was never one of the cool kids. So when I moved out here to LA, it finally gave me a chance to reinvent myself and be who I wanted to be. I just wanted to be accepted by my peers, you know, by other people around me, by girls. I just wanted to fit in. <laughs> okay. I used to um, work with the blog squad and David. Um, I always went an extra mile for David because I believed in him and I thought he was a good person. Oh, let's just, just take a second. Just take your time. David wouldn't give cars. David wasn't philanthropic at all. Like, he was just like this guy that would and this is a quote from his manager that would make his friends drink pee. Like, not even his manager <laughs> did it. In February 2019, David received the text from Dom. And when David received the text from Dom, David did not want to take the video down. In the room, it was Jason, Natalie, and David. I decided to contact a friend of mine that is a lawyer, and she advised that the video, like my instinct reaction was to take the video down. We drafted different versions of what should be the response to Hannah. And one of the things I was constantly mentioning was that Dom may be a girl and that they should contact a lawyer and that they should have removed themselves to relate to Dom because of that situation, and that Dom should have handled the situation with David. I will be discussing more things moving forward. Uh, the reason that led us to this video is because I interviewed Dom. This is something that's very close to my heart as of in the last few months, there's a lot of things that have come into my attention. I wanna thank Cass for getting on here. You know, I know it's, um... It's tough to you know talk about stuff like this. I appreciate you um, giving your input. I um, I fucked up, man. I uh, I thought that by us filming this video, it was just another fun, stupid vlog, and that everything would be fine and you know, nobody was harmed. And I was wrong. It it impacted these girls, and it's gonna it's gonna follow them for their whole life, and I, uh,
I know what we did that night wasn't right. I know, I know we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have filmed that video and we shouldn't have put you guys in that position and maybe you felt like you were there and, and, and you were gonna be in a video that was supposed to be fun and um, it turned out being not fun. It turned out being humiliating and degrading and embarrassing. And the last thing I wanted was for you guys to feel like um, like we're using you. I, um, I want to say I'm sorry to Hannah and to her friends for putting them in this position and for not considering their feelings and for not taking them seriously and for um, making a mockery and a joke out of them with this video. I understand that it's going to take time for you guys to heal. The last thing I want is for you guys to feel envy or feel hatred towards yourselves for, you know, um, being in this video because it is our fault. The responsibility falls on us as content creators to make sure that whoever we're filming or whoever we're putting in our videos is comfortable and knows what they're getting into and we didn't do that. We just posted this video because we thought that it would give us more money and more clout and... After watching this video on two times speed, I realized that there was really nothing to it. The first half of the video is him saying that he wasn't raised the way that he portrayed himself in all of the videos. And the second half of the video is him bashing David for not wanting to take the video down in the first place. Taking the blame off of himself in a way and putting it onto David for not respecting the wishes of the victim. He'd end the video off by saying that he was wrong for doing what he did to those girls, but shortly after this video came out, two other victims of Dirty Dom came out against him. One that spoke about a time where Dom humped her in a hallway during a vlog and made her feel uncomfortable, and the other time was with the girl who went to Dom's apartment, got drunk and high, and Dom tried to make out with her and take advantage of her. These were incidents that came to light after Dom's video, and it once again made Dom look like a huge creep. After this, he'd again avoid any of the issues brought up against him. He'd just continue to post on his channel and TikTok as if nothing happened and as if he was not in any controversy. The only time he'd speak about the allegations was on the Sync podcast, where he'd say pretty much nothing during the podcast. He'd make it seem like the news made the story worse, but the situation was already pretty horrible. Now, honestly, the fact that this podcast gave this weirdo a platform to spew his excuses was kind of terrible. And for them to not even acknowledge what he did in the first place and not really pressure him to speak about the allegations was just bad as well. And to see that they actually liked his presence there was pretty telling of a podcast before they stopped posting videos together. Now, Dom has become this alpha male woman hating person who tries to avoid any allegations against him. Not only did he do these vile things, he also admitted to doing them. But instead of actually being sorry, he'd make excuses and would push the blame onto David. In retaliation, David posts his apology video where he said that he doesn't associate with Dom anymore because of his creepy behavior. But David needs some of the blame as well for creating this character and allowing him to portray this type of person because it helped his channel grow. But just like other members of the vlog squad, once he started to be called out for creating this monster and it started to hurt his channel and his reputation, he'd cut off contact with Dom. Now, Dom is a creep who was able to get away with a lot of his terrible behavior because he'd state that it was just a character that he was playing in videos. But that character became his personality and it was no longer a persona. Now, did you like Dirty Dom and did you think his character and the vlogs were much more than just a funny persona? Let me know in the comments below. And another ex-member of the vlog squad who would be exposed for being a seriously horrible person behind the scenes. I think the next video we might have to change it up just a little bit because Superbam, who is a third party like copyright claims people, uh, have been killing my channel with all the copyright claims on all the vlog squad members, even though these claims are all false and they get released after like a couple weeks it does really become a pain to like try and dispute them every single time especially when they're trying to claim like seven parts of the video and it just really does become risky because they could always just not drop the claim and then it could uh it could be risky for my channel so i might have to switch up the content or the subjects that we're talking about in the next video just because i want to make sure that i get paid for the video and also i don't want to deal with that issue anymore at least not for the next couple of videos in the comments of the last video i stated that i would put your comment at the end of the video if you sent a super thanks so thank you to this viewer 
Sir for leaving a super thanks and supporting this channel and making sure that I'm able to buy a cup of coffee so then I can edit this video and make sure that it's pretty good and not messed up before I upload it. If you want your comment to be featured in the end of the videos, leave a super thanks, I'll respond to them and they'll be at the end of the video. I really appreciate the support of the channel and if you like what I do, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also check out the Discord and my Instagram, both will be linked in the comments and in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we probably look at infinite lists. Wait, how, how old is this guy? I'm actually not sure. Did you get the wrong guy? Indy. I think so. Indy. Wow. Did you, um a couple weeks ago on the channel, we covered David Dobrik, a huge YouTuber within the YouTube sphere with a staggering 17.6 million subscribers on his platform. During that video, Jason Ness was brought up a lot due to his appearance.